Welcome back to another crochet tutorial with Cozy Rosie UK. Today I am sharing with you how to crochet the corner to corner striped square. With colour changes all the way throughout it, you're going to be learning lots of different techniques today from the increase block, the decrease block, how to change colours without anyone being able to see and of course how to crochet this beautiful granny square. Now before we get started, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and of course the notification bell so you never miss out on another one of my crochet tutorials again. And of course, if you need to see the written pattern for this one or catch up on any of the other squares in the hodgepodge blanket crochet along, you can find all the details in the description box below. Let's find out those materials that we need so we can get stitching up the striped corner to corner square. So the materials that you're going to need for your corner to corner striped square is any number of colours really. You can use one, three, seven. I'm using an even number. Um, and I'm using four, all four colours that I've featured in my hodgepodge blanket squares so far. It is entirely up to you. But I would recommend at least using one other colour so you can practice the colour change technique because it's it's a really good lesson to learn. Um, once you fall in love with corner to corner, if you're not already a fan, you will be after you've made this square. Knowing how to change the colours without them being too obvious is the best technique. So I'm using four different colours and this is the order I'm using them, A, B, C and D. That's probably more than enough for me to do the amount of colour that we're going to use. Um, so I'm starting with bubblegum pink, I think that's 245, yep, 202 and 242. So these are all Aran weight or worsted weight yarns, size 4 and I am using my corresponding hook size. If you find that you crochet quite tightly, you might need to go up a hook size with this one. I've got a darning needle, a pair of scissors, of course, because you're going to get there's going to be a lot of ends on this one, but it is really worth it. If you've never done the corner to corner technique, or if you have done the corner to corner technique, don't worry. I'm going to tell you the quick way of doing it, and of course, I'm going to take those people that have never done it through it step by step as well. So gather all of your materials and let's get started. So the corner to corner technique is worked in blocks. They look like little squares and they're joined to each other. So rather than being worked in straight rows, it's literally worked from the corner out back into the corner. So we increase out to the width that we need and then decrease back to the finished point. So we're going to learn kind of the different types of blocks that are used within corner to corner crochet, along with how to change colours with this one. So grab your first colour. I'm starting with my bubblegum pink, which is 250. Just going to make a slip knot and pop that onto my hook. And then we're ready to start our first increase block. So all the increase blocks, regardless of where you are in your pattern, start the same. So we start by making a chain of six. One, two, three, four, five and six. And then from here, we're going to work one double crochet into the fourth chain from hook. So that's one, two, three and four. So we yarn over the hook. This is a US double crochet. So we insert that under that fourth chain from hook, yarn over, bring our loop up, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. We're then going to work one double crochet into the next two stitches as well. So we yarn over, insert the hook to bring up a third loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And then we yarn over again before we insert into that last chain, pull through two and pull through two. So this is our first corner to corner block. And I'm going to point out to you that this tail yarn is going to be your best friend of knowing that you've got your work facing the right way. Now it's up to you if you turn first or turn afterwards. I always do my chain before I turn. If you do it the other way, that's absolutely fine. So that was row one, that's it, just one block. What you'll notice is that the block numbers correspond with the row numbers. So when we do row two, we're gonna make two blocks. So going into row two, we're gonna start by making an increase block. So we chain six, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And I'm gonna turn my work and you'll see that my tail is closest to my hook hand, if that makes sense. So that's just something you've got to remember that your tail should be next to your hook. So to continue with this increase block, we're going to yarn over the hook and work one double crochet into the fourth chain from hook. So one, 
two, three and four. So I've yarned over, insert your hook and work your double crochet. And then we double crochet into the next two chains. And then into that next one again. So that makes our second one. So at the moment it should be that your tail is near your hook and your block is also near your hook because what we're going to do is slip stitch into this chain three space. So you've got one, two, three double crochets that we made and there's that chain three. Our tail is closest to our hook and we insert the hook into that chain three space and we slip stitch them to join them. So it should look like this. So your block is now near your hook and your tail is near your other hand. And then we're going to work a block, just a normal block that we work in any of our rows. So we start with a chain of three, one, two, and three. And then we work three double crochets into that chain three space. So we yarn over and insert our hook back into that same chain three space that we worked, that we slip stitched into. So that was one. And we're working number two into that same chain three space and number three as well. And that's row two. So if I always hold mine so point down, it should look like a little heart now. Tails at the bottom, you've got block one and block two, and that's row two complete. Now we're going to be changing colours every two rows. So if you're already au fait with corner to corner crochet that is the pattern I can tell you <laughs> if you're really really good at um, corner to corner we're changing rows sorry we're changing color every two rows and you need a total of 10 blocks before you start decreasing for those of us that want a little bit more help with that let's start by changing color so I'm going to always encourage you to change color before you finish your last block in your row doesn't matter what row number you're on we're always going to do it this way so I'm just going to pull my hook out and undo that last stitch I've got my next color ready so I'm going to start my last stitch in my last block of this row again before we color change so we yarn over insert the hook bring our loop up yarn over and pull through two and then I'm going to drop my yarn and pick up my new colour. I'm just going to place it over my hook with the tail away from me and then I'm going to finish this stitch just by pulling through with my new colour. Just tightening by pulling on there ever so slightly and then we're ready to go into row three. So with row three we're going to start with an increased block because we're adding another block in because we want three blocks. So we start with our chain of six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. I'm going to turn my work. So I've now got extra tails. Got this. My actual starting tail is closest to my hook, and I'm ready to work along these blocks. So we start by working that first double crochet into that fourth chain from hook. So there's one, two, three, and four. We yarn over the hook, insert it and work our first double crochet. And then we're gonna work one double crochet into each of the next two chains. So that's one. And that's two. There we go. Now we need to slip stitch this to that chain three group from row two. So I'm keeping my tail at the bottom so I don't want my tail over here anywhere else. My starting tail is at the bottom and the chain three space is kind of at the end of this block. So it's almost in the middle. So we're gonna insert our hook into that chain three space and slip stitch to join that increase block to this block. Because we're in the middle of a row, we're now gonna work your bog standard block, which is a chain of three, two, and three and we're going to work back into that chain three space working a further three double crochets so that's one back into that chain three space again for number two of the double crochets and then we're going to work a third one into that same chain three space 
If like me, you struggle with things in the way, just fold it out of the way. Because we know that as long as we've got our tail, our starting tail where our slip knot is at the bottom, we're in the right place. So we're going to slip stitch to join this block into this one. So we're looking for that chain three space. Just insert our hook, yarn over and pull through to slip stitch. And we're working another block on top of here because we're in row three and we want three blocks. So we will chain three, one, two and three. And then we're going to work three double crochets into this chain three space. So that's one, two, and a third one, all into that same chain three space. So with your starting tail pointing down, it should now look like this. So we've got row three, one, two, three blocks. Now row four, we're continuing in this colour. So we're going to start by making an increase block because we're going to increase to four blocks in row four. So we start with a chain of six. One, two, three, four, five and six. I'm going to turn my work, making sure that my starting tail is facing down. Get some yarn out of this ball. It's not letting me have very much today. And then we're going to work our increase. So we start by working into that fourth chain from hook. So one, two, three and four. We're going to yarn over and work one double crochet into the fourth chain from hook. And one into each of the next two chains. So that's two and well, one and two, should I say. So there's our block. If you let it go for any reason or you put it down and you're not sure where you are from this point, always go back to having that starting tail at the bottom because that will mean that everything kind of faces the right way. We're going to be joining onto this one. So it should be your new block will be pointing towards your hook and then we're going to slip stitch to join into that next block, just into that chain three space and slip stitch to join. Then we're going to work our blocks all the way across. So we chain three and work one double crochet into that chain three space we just slip stitched into. Don't forget that if these are getting in the way, you can fold them out of the way as well. We're going to slip stitch into that next block. So we're kind of attaching it onto here. Move that, just pull that down out of the way and slip stitch to join. We chain three. And then we're working into that same chain three space, working three double crochets. Okay, so we've got one more flappy block sat there. So we're going to slip stitch to join in this one. Now, because we've done two rows in this colour, we are going to change colour again at the end of this row. So let's start by, first of all, slip stitching into that chain three space to join. And then we're going to work our chain of three. And then we're going to work three double crochets again into that chain three space. And we're going to change colours in that final stitch. So that's one and two and we're going to do half of that third stitch so we yarn over insert bring our loop up yarn over pull through two and then we're ready to join our next color and for me that is going to be my 202 so i'm just going to place the yarn over my hook with the tail at the back and then it bring it through to complete that stitch and i'm just pulling gently down to bring that stitch to where it needs to be and then with my yeah, working yarn, we're ready to go into row five. So at the end of row four, you should have four blocks and you should be ready to continue or to start row five in color C. And again, we're gonna increase. So we're gonna work our chain of six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then we're going to work one double crochet into that fourth chain from hook. So one, two, three, there's number four. So 
So work one double crochet into the fourth chain from hook and then one double crochet into the next two chains. I've dropped it again. So I'm going to keep my tail of this block, should I say, keep the block close to my hook and then I want the tail, this big tail here, the first one we started with pointing down and that puts my work the right way. So the blocks are going this way and the block I've just worked is closest to my hook. So I want this colour yarn. We're going to slip stitch into that block. I mean, if you had it the other way, there's nothing to slip stitch into. You could go really wrong, I suppose. But just make sure that you're, you've got your blocks facing you and your tail is at the bottom. So we're going to slip stitch into that next chain three space. And then we chain three to work our normal block. And then we work three double crochets back into that same chain three space we just slip stitched into. We're going to then join to that next block into that chain three space. Once we've slip stitched that block onto that one, we work our chain of three. And we're ready to work back into that chain three space. Again, I'm just folding my work out of the way so I'm not going to get tangled up in it. And then work those three double crochets. Two. And three. Just folded my work back up. I'm going to find that next chain three space and I'm going to slip stitch into it to join that block. Then we chain three and work a further three double crochets into that same chain one space. You then need to join to the next block we're going to chain three and then work three double crochets into, into that chain three space again. So at the end of row five, you should have five blocks. Are you loving it so far? Let me know in the comments if you're enjoying this corner to corner crochet. It's one of my favourite techniques. It works up quite quickly. And once you've got the idea of you do your increases followed by your blocks until you've got it as big as you want it to go. And then we're going to eventually in a few minutes more, we're going to learn how to do the decrease block. So going into row six, we're continuing with this colour. So we're going to start with our chain of six. One, two, three, four five and six. I'm going to yarn over the hook ready to work one double crochet into that fourth chain from hook and then one into each of the next two chains. We keep that block near our hook, turn our work ready to attach it into that chain three space. So there's the bottom Okay, so just slip stitch to join. Then we work our normal blocks across. So that's our chain three and three double crochets into the same chain three space. We then attach the block again with a slip stitch into that next chain three space. Work those three double crochets. And we're just continuing to work across joining to each block working that normal block of our chain three and three double crochets across as well. So I'm just getting ready to join my final block here and work one final block on the top of this one. I've done my chain three, that's one double crochet, two double crochet and two and a half. I'm gonna stop so I can be ready to change color. So at the end of row six, we've already got six blocks and we're going to change colour. This time we're changing to colour D, which for me is this lovely deeper purple. I think it's tea rose actually is what it's called. And again, I'm just placing the end away from me and just finishing that stitch by bringing that loop through. Just tightening everything up a little bit. And then we're ready to go into row seven. 
So what these colour changes are doing is that you don't, you finish the stitch in the new colour so that you can't actually see the colour change. If you try it any other way, you'll probably see a difference there. And that's why I do recommend this technique for corner to corner when it comes to your colour changing. It does make a huge difference. So let's start row seven off together. We start with our chain of six. Three, four, five and six. We yarn over, ready to work one double crochet into that fourth chain from hook. And then we work one double crochet into the next two chains. Keeping that block nearest to our hook and keeping our work turned so we can see these kind of zigzags because we're going to join to them. So we slip stitch to join to that first block and then all the way across row seven we're going to work our normal block which is a chain of three and then three double crochets into that chain three space. So work all the way across to your final block and work your final block so you should have seven at the end of this one and I'll meet you at the end of row seven. So remember to slip stitch to join and then work your chain three followed by three double crochets into that same chain three space. So at the end of row seven you should have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven blocks. Let's get ready to go into row eight by starting with our chain of six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Gonna continue with our increase block by working one double crochet into the fourth chain from hook. and then one double crochet into each of the next two chains. Keep that block close to your hook, look for your spiky bits, and we're slip stitching to the top of that chain three space. Ready to work our blocks across with a chain of three, and then three double crochets into that same chain three space. So continue to work all the way across, slip stitching into the chain three spaces. And at the end of this block, we're gonna change color again. So I'll meet you for our final block of row eight. So I've just reached my final block here, just slip stitching to join, working my chain of three, and then a further three double crochets. But I'm gonna stop halfway through that third double crochet so that we can change color. Oh, I nearly finished it. I knew I'd do that. <laughs> Absolute autopilot there. So I'm stopping here. I'm going to pop my work down because I still have all my colours attached. So I'm just going to leave a nice long tail and fasten those off because we are going back to colour A. At least I am. You do whatever colour you're doing. Um, so I'm joining colour A again and just bringing that through change colour and then we can start with our chain of six going into row nine four five and six so at the end of row eight you should have eight blocks going all the way across and once you've done your chain six we're going to start that increase block working into that fourth chain from hook with one double crochet and then one double crochet into the each of the two remaining chains. I'm going to turn my work, keep my block to my hook, ready to slip stitch to join. And then we're ready to work row nine and row 10. So you're going to continue all the way across, make sure that you've got nine blocks. Don't forget to work a block on this end one. When you get, once you finish that block, you're going to turn your work and just as we've done here, you're going to make your increase block. Now we are going to change colours, so I'm going to meet you in that last block of row 10. Now if you want to count your rows, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. This is row nine that we're doing. So continue all the way along row nine, complete row 10 
to that last block where we're going to change colour and then, well, and then I'm going to show you how we decrease as well. So continue working those two rows and I'll meet you at the end of row 10. If you get stuck, don't forget you can look at any of the start of the rows. All of these rows start the same. It's just that the number of blocks you work matches the row number that you're on. I'll meet you at row 10, the end of row 10. So at the end of row 10, I have completed my final block because we're not changing colour just yet. I just wanted to get you back before you carried on. So at row 10, sorry, going into row 11, this is where we're going to work our first decrease block. So this is um, where I'm saying for us to decrease because it makes I make my square eight inches. If your square is bigger than eight inches, you can either reduce, like take a couple of rows off until you're back to just a seven inch width across because the other side should also measure about eight inches. Yep, yeah, perfect. So you want this bit to measure eight inches because all we're going to do now is square off the ends. And the way that we do that is with a different block. This is called our decrease block. So what we've been doing at the start of every row so far is increasing. What we're going to do now is to start decreasing. So going into row 11, we continue with our colour A. We chain one and turn our work. We've still got our tail at the bottom here, pointing down with our zigzags. And what we're going to do is work across the top of this stitch so we're not doing that chain of six so we're not adding a block on we're going to be working across to start working from this chain one space so to do that we start by slip stitching into each stitch across so you just insert your hook and pull it straight through the loop on your hook to slip stitch across each of those three stitches and then we're going to slip stitch into that chain three space because we want to change color we're not going to complete that slip stitch with color a i'm going to change to color b again just put my yarn over the hook tail at the back and straight through the loop on my hook i can pull on color a just to tighten and then we are ready to start working so we start with our chain of three because we're already in a chain three space and we're just going to work those three double crochets into this block. So that's one, two, and three. I am working over my ends just there. I'll probably regret that later. And we're going to continue to work all the way the rest of the row as we have before. And we're going to end row 11 with just nine blocks. You'll see what's happening at the end of this row is that we've skipped increasing. So we haven't put a new block on. So we're going to have one block less at the end. So work your blocks into each block across and I'll meet you at the end of row 11. So we've worked one block across the top of the next eight blocks and we're just going to slip stitch into this last block to join but we're not going to work the remainder of that block instead we're going to turn and go straight into row 12. we start with our chain of one and then we work one slip stitch across the top of each block And then we slip stitch into that chain three space. So for row 11 in our purple colour, we should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine blocks at the end of row 11. Continuing on with row 12, we've worked our slip stitch across and we're going to start by making our chain of three. And then we work three double crochets into that chain three space. And then we slip stitch to join as normal into the next one. So it's from here you can really start to see what's happening. We're squaring off our block by not working into that last block and adding on another block there. We're not making this side any taller. So we're decreasing on both sides of our square. So we're going to continue to work row 12. 
with our chain three and three double crochets all the way up to that last block. So I've worked those additional seven blocks and I've reached where we need to slip stitch to join. We're not changing colors yet because we're gonna slip stitch across in this color first. So once you've worked, you've got your eight blocks, that you've worked one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. That's when we're gonna slip stitch to our now flattening row. And we're gonna turn and work our slip stitches. So we're going into row 13. So we slip stitch across the next three stitches And then we're going to change colour as we slip stitch in this chain three space. So I'm just going to place with my tail at the back, put that new yarn on my hook, pull through and through the loop on my hook and just pull down on that other colour to secure. And then we're ready to continue row 13 in colour C. So we chain three and then we work our three double crochets into that chain three space just as before. So we slip stitch to our next block. And because we're continuing to decrease, we're gonna work one, two, three, four, five, six blocks in this row. So work your chain of three, work the next six blocks and I'll meet you ready to join to our flat there. So I've just worked my last block in row 13 and I'm just slip stitching to the last. And I wanted to just let you know how you now count your rows because we've in theory turned a corner. We've got row one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, 11, 12, and 13. So we start now counting up one side and then across the other. So once you've done your slip stitch, we can go into row 14. We're going to chain one and then slip stitch across the top of the next three stitches. So that's one, two, and three. And then we slip stitch into that chain three space, ready to start our blocks. So we chain three. And then we work our three single crochets sorry, double crochets, goodness me. That's one, two, three. And then we slip stitch and continue into the next blocks all the way up to this last one here, ready to slip stitch. So keep working across up to that last block and I'll meet you there. So I've worked my six blocks for row 14 and then we're just gonna slip stitch to join, do our chain one and turn. So we're going to slip stitch across before we change colour because we're going to change colour in that chain three space so no one can see. I'm ready to change colour and I'm going on to colour whatever that one is, T rose, D, must be D. I'm just inserting my hook into the next chain three space, placing that loop over my hook with the tail at the back, ideally, there we go. And then I'm just going to slip stitch with that new colour ready to work my chain three. So in row 15, we're going to work five blocks. And that will take us up to this last one here. So continue to work all your five blocks and I'll meet you at the end of row 15. So I've worked my five blocks and I'm ready to slip stitch into that chain three space. I'm going to chain one and turn and we're ready for row 16. I'm getting nice and quick again now, aren't they? So we're just going to slip stitch across those first three stitches and then into that chain three space. And then we're ready to continue. We're going to work our chain of three and work our three double crochets into that chain three space. And we're going to continue all the way up when you've worked your four blocks across. So I've worked my blocks, my four blocks across. I'm just slip stitching to join to that last block. And then we're going to chain one and turn. We're going to slip stitch across those first three stitches. And then we're going to change colour as we slip stitch into that chain three space. 
so I need to change colours. So I'm changing back to colour A and I'm still in my, I'm just going to slip stitch through my chain three space to change colour. And then I am ready, I'm going to make that a little bit longer, ready to do our chain of three. And we have one, two, three blocks to work here. So we're going to work our blocks as normal. And we're just going to slip stitch to that next chain three space. And a chain one, ready to work our slip stitches back across, going into row, are we on row 18 already? I can't, we are on row 18 already. Goodness, these last few rows really fly. Now we know what we're doing, don't they? Just going to slip stitch into that chain three space, work our chain of three. We only have two blocks to work on this row. So once we've slip stitched, we're going to do a chain one and turn. Now it is entirely up to you if you are as pedantic as I am when it comes to colour changing. You can, of course, make one final colour change if you want to, or you can be bold and leave it and go rogue with your colour changes, because in theory, we should make one more colour change. We have two at this end and I've got one left. But I think I'm going to do it in pink because no one's going to notice, are they? Or will they? I'm going to have to change. I can't do it. So I'm going to pick up <laughs> my colour V just for this one last block, just because I'm concerned people will be able to see. So just working into that chain three space, one final time changing colours, pull through, straight through the loop on my hook, no more fingers and thumbs. I'm ready to work my final chain three. And then I'm just gonna work my very, very final block And to finish, we just slip stitch to join. Feels a little bit anticlimactic, that finish. Nice long tails as always. And pull that through. My goodness, that's a lot of ends. Where are we attached still? And one there for good measure. So I fastened off. <laughs> all of those ends and there are a lot of them unfortunately you've got them going up both sides but that is our completed corner to corner stripe square i have not put an edging on this one because it has such defined stitches down the edges i don't think that it needs it but i really hope that you've enjoyed learning how to crochet the corner to corner striped square if you've never done corner to corner before and you've gotten through this pattern i'm super impressed um, I hope that all my hints and tips about that tail has helped, making sure that you know which side your block should be when you're turning and that you've really enjoyed learning this technique. You can imagine the vast, just working this in one variegated yarn just looks absolutely stunning. And it really is worth grabbing, you know, making a whole blanket in this if you haven't already. But I really love corner to corner crochet. I love the fact that no matter which way you've got it, it is worked out from the corner and then back in. So I really hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial as always. Give it a thumbs up if you have. Make sure that you've hit that subscribe button, of course, the notification bell, so you don't miss out on tomorrow's square in the hodgepodge blanket crochet along. It's been an absolute pleasure sharing all of these squares with you, and I'll be back tomorrow with another one. So until then, keep it cosy.